Hi, everyone. Welcome to the From Within Workbook Information Session. If you had questions about the workbook, hopefully this video will answer those questions. And whatever it doesn't answer, please feel free to reach out to me. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the origin of the workbook, where it came from, also the purpose of it, its intended purpose. And then I'm going to share some highlights from the workbook and do a little bit of a walkthrough with you. And there are some frequently asked questions that folks have been asking me, so I go on and address them at the end of this video. I'm going to timestamp so the video so that you know exactly when things happen, so feel free to skip ahead for the information that you need. And just in case I'm new to you, hi, my name is Tamisha Williams. I'm zooming in from the city of Richmond in Virginia, my hometown. My background is in art and education and also counseling. And all three of those areas really go into all of the work that I do as a consultant and workshop facilitator and also as a coach. I always like to introduce my wife and my dog because I am at home. So just in case you hear things in the background, that's who that, that is. And if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about my journey, happy to talk to you at another time, but a quick snippet. I do have a background in college admission counseling and also as an equity practitioner in independent schools. So doing diversity, equity, and inclusion work with students, faculty, staff, administrators, um, parents and guardians in independent schools throughout the country. And as of last year, well, if you're seeing this in 2022, as of 2021, I started my own consulting company and really work um, along the lines of equity and wellness, especially for educators, but I also work with organizations beyond schools. So where did this workbook come from? If you're not familiar, I actually have a workbook that I published in the summer of 2020. And this was a workbook that allowed um, educators to specifically look at things like social identity, body practices, right? Making sure that we are in touch with our bodies, um, how we're feeling and how that impacts how we're showing up. There were spaces for us to do some racial identity work um, and also thinking about um, visualization exercises that can happen and a little bit also around Black Lives Matter, um, understanding that in the summer of 2022, I was really at the height and in people's minds. Um, that particular workbook used the framework of Onward by Elena Aguilar, really looking at her chapters that spoke to June, July, and August. Once um, some folks saw that workbook. They asked me and in, in the Austin Independent School District, their SEL department, they asked me to create a specific workbook for their department that they were going to use to actually do professional development with all of the employees within their district. After creating that workbook, I thought to myself, this would be an excellent workbook beyond that district. So what I did is I took the past year to pause, re-examine that workbook, look at the format of it, and restructured it for all educators. So that's what you have now, the From Within workbook. This particular workbook, some of the differences is that it is not a PDF. The summer workbook for educators was a PDF, so you couldn't really manipulate it or type reflections into it. This new workbook is interactive, so you can type into it. It's available on Google Slides and on PowerPoint. Um, this one also focuses now on the core areas of social emotional learning. So we're looking at developing self-management, increasing self-awareness, developing social awareness, enhancing relationship skills, and responsible decision making. And this workbook is still focused on the educator and having us do our internal work again before we go in and support and create spaces for our young people. This workbook is intentionally created for the full year use. And just like the summer workbook, you can keep coming back to it. But the summer workbook was a workbook that could be completed in the summer. This workbook is not a workbook that I would suggest we complete only in the summer. Its intention really was for a full school year use. All right, let's look at some of the purpose. Really the core purpose of this workbook is to assess and cultivate healthy social and emotional capacity within educators. 
And this is uh, something that I, a graphic I pulled out from the actual workbook, but there's an article in there that really talks about the importance of adults learning how to label and express and regulate our own emotions. And some of the benefits of that is that we're less likely to report burnout. We demonstrate higher levels of patience and empathy with those around us. And then we also can more effectively teach and model some of the social and emotional skills that we are trying to teach our young people. If we're not practicing them ourselves, um, the impact that we're having on young people is probably going to be different than what we intend. Last but not least, positively contribute to the school's overall environment. I want to pause here because I realize that I have not started my... Hey, sorry, I realized that I have not started the live transcript. And I hope now that we can get that started. All right, let's keep going. All right. So in thinking about the purpose, I also in this workbook want to bring um, attention to Dr. James Comer, who really, whose research really launched, right, social and emotional learning, his movement to educate the whole child. And I think it's important that when we think about social and emotional learning and SEL, um, that we go back to the roots and that we don't try to water down um, the purpose of this um, of this type of education, or sorry, the way that we're teaching our young people. So here are some highlights from the workbook, and soon I'm going to escape from the screen that I'm in and actually take you into that workbook. The From Within workbook is 162 pages, um, and you can see here just a quick snapshot of the table of contents. And you'll see that beyond page 58, all of the other sections um, really speak again to those five core areas of social and emotional learning. And the workbook structure is that there's going to be title pages and content pages, and then some pause and ponder pages. So throughout the workbook, I am going to be asking you to pause and just stop and reflect. Again, it's not the type of workbook that you should just be trying to run through and get done. It is something that I am asking us to pace ourselves through. Um, there's also gonna be content pages, which will have visuals, materials, and prompts for you, as well as spaces for you to type in and reflect directly into the workbook. And then there will be some intentional pause points. So that's different than the pause and ponder pages. The pause points are just gonna ask you to stop and just assess like, how long has it been since you've removed your eyes from the screen? When was the last time you got up and stretched and moved your body? And last but not least, there will be energy checks throughout the workbook. And those energy checks really do ask you to think about all that you've taken in in that particular section and assess for yourself. Is this something that I, some of the changes that I want to make, like some of the changes that I'm fired up about in this section, are these changes that I have like control over, things that I have influence over, or are they things that are outside of my control? And depending on where they fall in those spheres of influences and control, where do I want to spend my energy? Some of the other highlights that we're about to talk about. Um, there's exercises within the workbook that are good for the beginning of the year, especially those opening days. There are some that are good as you're transitioning into new seasons or terms throughout the year. And there are others that also help us to assess relationships um, with ourselves and relationship to our students, to our community members and colleagues. Um, also just thinking about who we are in relationship to those we serve. All right, before we go to the frequently asked questions, let's pause and just take a quick moment to look at the workbook. All right, so when you get your workbook, it will actually be structured again. This is the Google Slides version, but you can also get it on PowerPoint. You have the option to personalize it, on the first slide, but also I recommend you titling it something so that you can come back to it again throughout the year because you will be making your own copy of the workbook. I'm also gonna go on and move this part of the screen up. You can see me moving my speaker's notes at the bottom. And that's because it is important for you to pay attention down there. There's going to be notes 
um, sometimes resources and the speaker's notes, and I don't want you to miss those. The first 20 or so pages actually are an introduction from me to you, um, also expressing gratitude for folks who have helped me to get this book together. And also, again, just helping you get oriented throughout the workbook. So some of that is context, why this workbook was made. Other pieces um, are also just explanations. Me telling you like, here's what I mean when I say equity. And then again, what do we mean by equity-centered SEL? And there's gonna be a couple pages that just ask you to pause and remember that this is a workbook we want you to take your time with. So for those of you who have been encouraged to do this all in one summer, go on and show them this page here. <laughs> Tell them Tamisha said, no. And then there are some ways of beings that I invite folks to think, to think about and to take in as they are working in the workbook. And here's an example of our first section, reflect and prepare. So you find out what's in the section. You can go directly to whatever page you want, but there's always going to be a pause and ponder page after each title, each section title page. Again, just to get you grounded. What do you need to be mindful of before you proceed into this work? So now let's take a look at one of the sections. Again, just so you can get a feel of how the workbook is structured. Get into your feelings. This is one of the exercises that's really good for the beginning of the year and even now in the summertime if you wanted to do. There's a content page. Again, this is fully illustrated by yours truly. So you have that information there. And then there's a page where it's asking you a question. I ended the year feeling. And you can see that I can go right into this box and I can type in. end of the year feeling exhausted, right? And then I can go to the next one. What's nice is let's say that I, I'm, I'm a writer and I really want to get some more information out. I can come down to my speaker's notes and extend my writing here. So this is a workbook that you can manipulate and make your own. This section is not just asking you about how you ended the year, but it also starts to ask you about how you want to prepare for the year ahead. Again, thinking about the feelings that are coming up for you. And then we go through this idea of like, how do I navigate my uncomfortable feelings? And there's a pause and ponder page here that also asks you to think about your feelings again in relationship to the work that you do. And then there are resources. This is a feelings chart if you wanted to use it as you filled out the workbook. But you could also pull these resources and use them within your classroom or your team meetings, whatever it may be. All right, so let's pause there. We're gonna to go to our frequently asked questions because that's gonna then have me come back and highlight some more in the workbook for you. All right, five frequently asked questions. Thank you to everyone who has shared your questions with me in person or online. They've been really helpful for me in compiling this, um, these resources for folks so that everyone can utilize this tool in the most effective way. First question, is this a summer workbook? Now we talked about that before. No, it's not a summer workbook. If you're looking for a summer workbook to complete during the summer, go download my summer workbook for educators. That's on my website, tamishawilliams.com slash shop. Um, and that's a great resource. It was created in 2020 and is still really relevant now. Um, but there are relevant exercises in this workbook that would be helpful for you to look at or for you again to assign to your employees, your faculty and staff members, um, depending on how you're structuring the use of the workbook. So we're going to go take a look at the introduction framing, get into your feelings, and explore your choice, explore your choice board. All right, let's exit out of here and go take a look at that. Again, I highly recommend in the summer for you to take a moment and just go through the first 24 pages. Understand the framing, the why behind this workbook. Read some of the, the notes that talk to you about how to navigate this workbook, who it's for, how you should use it. 
that's a really great summer exercise. It's important for you to have that understanding in order to fully appreciate the workbook. It's also great for you, again, to get some of that understanding about what do you mean by equity-centered SEO? What do you mean by equity? So that, to me, is an important part of the summer. Next would be the get into your feelings section. I think that that's a great exercise for the summer because it gives you space to, again, reflect on your feelings leaving the last school year and also reflect on your feelings coming into the year ahead. So that's a, a great exercise. And the other one that I mentioned was the choice board. The choice board is also really great for the summer because it gives you an opportunity to think about some things that you can do to rest, to restore, to reconnect, and to get rejuvenated before the year starts. I mean, these are also good things that you can do throughout the school year. And again, my hope is that you will go into the speaker's notes and think about extending beyond the workbook. How might you use choice boards in your classroom from the youngest young people all the way to our oldest? So when it comes to using this workbook as a summer workbook, I do not suggest it. However, there are exercises that are good to do in the summer with this workbook. Question two, what's the most effective way to use this workbook in the fall? Thank you for asking. So one thing I would say is feel free to weave the exercises in this workbook into your opening days. There are several schools who have purchased the workbook for all of their employees. Well, this is a great opportunity to bring some of these exercises into those um, meetings that you're gonna have at the beginning of the school year. And I would also mix it up. If you've taken time to go through the whole workbook and just scan it, you might say, you know, instead of us doing all of these together, why don't department chairs or team leads, why don't you do this section with your teams? Because this would be great conversation for you all to have. Mix it up. Here are some of the things that I think would be great for the start of the school year or the start of the season, depending on when you're getting this. If you're getting it in January, it's still again relevant for you to look at some of these exercises. The first is the whole reflect and prepare section. So that's where we're going to be spending our time. It's called reflect and prepare for a reason. There's an exercise on creating healthy and resilient communities. Um, opportunity for you to reflect on your hopes for the year or for the new season. Um, also, giving you a moment to anticipate some of the roadblocks that are coming up. Acknowledge your anchors and buoys so we can get connected to our core values. And then also activating our dorsal fin, which is one of my favorite exercises. Let's go take a look. All right, so as I mentioned, the reflect and prepare section is all about reflecting on the past year and preparing for the next. So all of those exercises I just mentioned can be found right here in that section. We've already talked about get into your feelings. If you haven't looked at the previous video for question one, I highlight get into your feelings. But again, in terms of the start of the new year and season, here are some really great exercises to look at. Create a healthy and resilient community is a short one, but it gives you an opportunity to think about what elements you want in a healthy and resilient community and who you can spend time around, right, in order to ensure that you are around folks who are feeding into that healthy and resilient community. One page reflection, but really great to get our minds thinking in that direction. Reflect on your hopes is a really great exercise. And again, this is where it's important to not just do this on your own, but to do this work in community. You have an opportunity to reflect for yourself on what you want to see, um, hear, or feel in the new year or season. Let me zoom in a little bit so that you can see a little bit more of this exercise. And here's another pro tip, zooming in. Go to Zoom, 100, and then I can read on the screen a lot easier. So this particular exercise asks you, what do you want this new year season to look like and gives you some prompts. And what I would recommend is you to just start answering right there, right? Just thinking what comes to my mind. 
Then you're asked, what do you want this new year or season to sound like? And then what do you want this new year or season to feel like? And after you've done some reflecting, you're gonna be invited to actually get visual, not just write those things down, but create some visual that either um, has some symbols or visualizes out everything that you've just written down because that can then become a guide for you throughout the year. And if you're like, oh, Tamisha, get visual. Well, don't worry. I have a video here that you can access where I teach you some visualization, some quick draw techniques. Another exercise that's good for the beginning of the year is anticipate your roadblocks. Let me go in and zoom out again. But again, remember that function for yourself. Again, this is a quick one pager. Make sure I'm not lying on that. <laughs> Which just asks you to think about what roadblocks you might meet during the year. And what are some of the ways that you can um, support yourself in addressing those roadblocks? So that's again another one that people might want to do on their own, but where is it helpful for them for you to then be able to share that feedback with others? Anchors and buoys are all about us getting clear about our core values and not just our core values, but also thinking about who are those individuals or people who really keep us lifted throughout the year or what are some of those practices that keep us lifted. And it's important to acknowledge these early rather than waiting for high waves to come and then we don't feel anchored. So that's a great exercise. This is an exercise that I've done with um, all employees at a school. We filled this out, we talked about it, and then I had folks create an actual um, stone. Everyone got a stone and they were able to draw on it with markers and I keep it on my desk as a physical reminder of my anchors and buoys. So again, a way to go beyond the workbook. Activating your dorsal fin is again about this idea of stabilizing practices. What are some of the practices that you have that help to center you, that help you build community so that when those high waves come throughout the year, you can go back and say, okay, hold on. <laughs> this is rough, but I know there are things that can help me stay grounded. All right, so I'll pause there and let's go on back to effective ways to use this in the fall. So I just shared some of the exercises that would be helpful to look at as you're launching into the new year or a new season, but there are also some exercises I think that are good as you're focusing in on those first six weeks of school. Um, there's amplifying counter narratives, practice saying affirmations and setting intentions, assess relationships, and also engage student voice and brilliance. These four exercises, again, are great for especially um, classroom teachers who are thinking about establishing key relationships in those first six weeks. But again, this is a workbook for any employee. And so when you're thinking about assessing relationships, classroom teachers shouldn't be the only ones assessing relationships within the school community and building strong relationships. We all hit times where we need a positive affirmation. So these tools are critical as we're thinking about having strong rapport in our classrooms in those first six weeks and the trust that gets built. But that also goes for the first six weeks of school with any employee. So really important to look at these sections as well. And when you're thinking about um, using the workbook, I would also say, look at some of the ways to go beyond just reading, writing, and then talking. And if you look at the develop self-management section, there are some really cool tools there. Um, loop writing and play using mindfulness. Those types of exercises are in that section. It might be good ways for you to say, hmm, how can I bring those ways of being, play and mindfulness and loop writing, et cetera, into the professional development I'm leading? Last but not least, if you're looking at ways to use this in the fall, you can also think about ways to pull this workbook throughout the year. As you round the first quarter or you finish up that first semester, some of the sections you might want to look at are examining your personal identity, how diverse is your universe, affirming dignity in your school, right? That gives you a moment to really think about how am I affirming dignity? How do I feel that my dignity is being affirmed in this school? A, mo a good moment of reflection. 
um, tips on how to build community through storytelling and a really excellent exercise there that can be translated well into the classroom. This is a good opportunity for us to pause and consider ongoing ways to foster community. So I've taken the first six weeks, I've really established myself. How do I keep that going throughout the school year? Use feedback to build community. If you haven't gotten feedback in the first quarter or semester, let's get it. That section will give you some tips on that. And then we know we're going to face struggle probably within the first six weeks. So embrace productive struggle. That can be from day one. But again, that's a really great um, opportunity for us to pause and think about ways as struggle starts to happen and tension starts to rise in the school year, how can I embrace struggle productively? And then embracing students and conversations that count. There's some good resources there for classroom teachers. Again, for anybody that's working with our young people, but especially thinking about some of the ways that classroom teachers might utilize some of the tools in that section. And the last thing I'll share is that the final reflection of the workbook, let me show you that, ask some key questions about ways that you will implement change. And I think that that particular reflection could be used multiple th times throughout the year. So let me zoom in and show you that. If I get to a section and I'm thinking like, oh, what do I want to do with all this information? Well, I can come here and answer, what's your next step? Right, write something in this section that's going to help you commit to an actual next step that's going to help us transform our learning environments. Take a moment and acknowledge what might get in the way. And then based on what might get in the way, what kind of support do you need? And then who can hold you accountable or what do you need to hold yourself accountable to this change? This is something that again, you can do after each section. So because this is a workbook that can be manipulated, you could right click if you're on a Windows like me and you could copy the slide or excuse me, duplicate slide. Give that a second. And then I can move this up to the section I want. So again, I could also go here and control C and then paste it control V right under the section I want. So I can do these reflection questions throughout the year, not just at the end of this workbook. All right, so hopefully that's helpful in terms of you thinking about how you can use this workbook at the top of the year, in the first six weeks, in the first quarter and semester, but again, not just the summer. This is not a summer workbook. Question three, can teachers use exercises from the workbook in their classrooms? I'm glad that you asked. Yes, teachers can, and I wanna pause and caution us. The first thing is, um, first of all, this workbook is established considering the five components of SEL. And so absolutely, I hope that teachers are helping young people develop self-management and increase their self-awareness throughout um, the year. So yes, transfer some of the skills that you're learning into your classroom. You don't have to do the same exercises in order to gain those skills, or, or excuse me, in order to teach those skills to young people. But hopefully you learning and engaging with those um, particular skill sets sparks some ideas for you. I would also encourage you to allow some of the insight that you gain from the work that you're doing to shift your ways of being and thinking. Some of the exercises in this workbook are gonna be asking you about some of the bias that you're bringing into the classroom, some of the ways that you've been socialized. And so how can you take the, that insight and say, hmm, are there things I need to shift to create a more equitable learning environment for my young people? So yes, take that into your classroom. And then I hope that throughout this workbook, you, as you're engaging in play and visualizing, drawing, mindfulness activities, that you also take some of those into your classroom. Doesn't have to be the same exercise, but those skills and those ways of learning that sometimes get pushed aside after elementary school, we need to bring more of that into our classrooms. And the last thing I'll say is, yes, if there's an exercise and you're like, ooh, I love this, I want to try this with my students, here's my suggestion. One, learn, right? Like, read what you need to do in the workbook 
do the actual exercise in the workbook. Give it your full attention without thinking about how can I do this with my young people? And then discuss it with someone else. If I haven't said that enough, do this work in community. This workbook is not meant to be done alone. So talk about your learnings. Talk about what it was like to experience that exercise. You want to do that before you say, hey, young people, here, do this. And you haven't actually thought through what it might be like for them to engage fully and vulnerably. And last but not least, discern, right? Have some discernment around which exercises make sense to transfer to a classroom, for what age group, for what context. And if, if you really love an exercise, is there a way, again, that it can spark some creativity for you to do something like it or something that has the same um, goals in mind in your classroom, but it doesn't have to be the same exact thing? This workbook was specifically designed for educators. Um, again, educators, we're talking all employees in the school community for you all to do yourselves and with each other, not then for it to completely be transferred into the classroom. Question four, what facilitation tips can you share? Okay. If you just watch the video in number three, you might hear me say over and over again, do this workbook for yourself first and do it in community first. That means not just sitting and doing it by yourself, but actually talking to other folks about what you gained, what insight you shared, what was hard, what was challenging, what was helpful, what was illuminating, what you plan to do. Do that before you implement do the exercises yourself before you implement and that's also good um, and important for anything that we do before we do with others have we taken the moment to do it ourselves so if you're going to be leading opening meetings and taking some of these exercises and doing with your team be sure to do them yourself with a few people make sure that you understand how to facilitate them what might come up for people and along that, those lines, assess the psychological safety of your space before you implement. And that means we have to be very honest about the trust that's in our spaces, the levels of um, safety that folks feel for being vulnerable and open and sharing. I always invite people to only share aloud what they're interested in um, and what's comfortable for them, but in their workbook, which is theirs, to type away, right? To be most vulnerable with ourselves. So it might be important for us to like begin with low stakes ways of sharing the core values exercise, for example, the anchors and buoys. That's a great low stakes one. And people can discuss that in small groups with one another or in teams and departments. But jumping right to how diverse is your universe or the personal identity exercise might not be psychologically safe for everybody. Again, I always also invite you all to go beyond the workbook. If you watched the previous video where I talked about the anchors and buoys exercise, that's an exercise that I did with all employees at a school. And then after we did that exercise, we took rocks and we painted on them symbols that helped us remember our anchors and buoys. Again, a great way to not just do what's in the workbook, but also extending beyond. Get creative. That would be my facilitation tip weave in play and joy and humor and music and art. This workbook is sure dynamic, but it can be even more when you supplement it with really dynamic professional development for your educators. And the last thing I would say is please don't rush it. And that's why I said in question one, this is not a summer workbook. This is not something that can be rushed and done overnight and in a summer. So when you are facilitating a section or a session using a particular section, be sure to give yourself enough time. That's the benefit of doing it yourself. You can say, oh, how long did it take me to answer those questions? How much time then are you giving other people? And you may need to add some minutes in. If you're someone who can process things quickly, have someone who process a little slower than you do the exercise themselves so that you again get an opportunity to think about the average amount of time needed and that you're not trying to rush fitting something into a small amount of time that could have a big impact if it were done well. Question five, last one. What pro tips do you have for navigating the workbook? Okay, here are my pro tips. 
The first, scan it. This could be a really useful and transformative tool if you knew what was in there. So when you get the workbook, I encourage you to actually just go through, get familiar with the table of contents, with the sections, look at each exercise and just say, hmm, oh, what could I use that for? When might that be good to do? I think that there's a lot of valuable things here that folks can use, again, with all employees and departments and teams, if you knew it was there. Choose the platform that works for you. And if you're buying this for everyone at your school, encourage them to choose the platform that works for them. You will get links to both Google Slides and PowerPoint. So you should share both of those links with your community so that they can make that choice. And then zoom in and zoom out and check the presenter notes. I'll take a moment and go over um, to the workbook in a second and show you what I mean by that. Manipulate the workbook because it's yours. So let's look at those two in the actual workbook. Uh-oh, I lost my mouse. Here we go. All right, so manipulate the workbook. Um, you can see here that I have two of one slide, and that's because I can delete, I can copy, I can paste slides. This is now my workbook. Once you download it, you're encouraged to use it as you need. So if these reflection questions on page 154 are good for you to do after every section, copy and paste them, right? I can control C, I can zoom all the way up and say, I wanna answer this question after this mind or after my anchors and buoys exercise. Okay, after my resilient <laughs> community exercise, my mouse is getting away from me. Control V and in a moment it should be there, right? Manipulate this as you need. Zooming in and zooming out. If you're on Google Slides or PowerPoint, it may look far away from you and you may be moving into your screen to read it. If that's the case, I would encourage you to go up to Zoom, this little button here and zoom it to 100 and just, then you can scroll up and down. You could also go to View and there's a Zoom function there. Zoom in and out as you need, um, just to make sure that this is a, resource that you can easily use. We don't want anyone straining while using this exercise or this resource. And then a reminder to go into your speaker's notes because there may be some resources there. So in this particular one, there's a resource about negativity bias. In this slide where I have a video, I've given you the video access. If you can't access it in the slides, so your speaker's notes are going to be helpful for you. Other than that, my biggest, biggest advice to you, pro tip, is to pace yourself. Again, this is a workbook that is designed to be transformative, not done alone, done in community. And so if you're sitting and just doing it because your school perhaps isn't, Join me. I'm actually going to be leading sessions in August, September, and October so that any educator who has access to this workbook can come together and we're going to do this work together. I'll facilitate the sessions and you can be a learner in this space. Um, but if you are in a school community and your school is using this as a resource, do this work in community. Do not sit and just do them by yourselves. Talk with your colleagues about it. Hey, what did you get from that exercise? What came up for you? Yeah, I was thinking about this. What are you thinking about shifting and changing? That's the power of our work. We're not alone in this world. We're not alone in this work and we are better together. So pro tip of all time, do this work in community and have fun with it, please. Um, I think that's it, you all. Oh, there's a bonus. <laughs> bonus question. Is this a parent resource? I mean, short answer is it was not designed to be. And it doesn't mean that any person who gets their hands on this workbook can't adapt it for their needs. So absolutely, if there is somebody who is interested in this resource, I think that they could absolutely gain value from it um, by doing it themselves. It wouldn't be something though that I would say a school should say, hey, all parents, we're buying you this workbook. It wasn't designed for that. And again, I think it is also designed with an idea that there is some level of facilitation in mind. That being said, I have heard your request for companion exercises for parents and guardians. So yes, 
I'm going to think about that. Um, right now I am resting in the summer. Um, and this first workbook took a lot of energy to bring into the world. So I'm going to keep that in mind to be thinking about it. And when companion exercises for parents and guardians and caretakers of our young people come out, I will be sure to let you all know, especially anybody who has downloaded the workbook. I hear you. If you come up with companion exercises for your parent guardian community, let me know. And I would love to share them with other people. That's the beauty. That's why I created this workbook. I don't want to hold on to exercises and activities and learning materials and resources just for myself. I think it's so important that you all have access to those and share it in community. Thank you if you've stuck around for this entire video or if you've gone and watched all the different videos. Thank you so much. There's no time for questions because this is not a Q&A where you're live. So if you do have questions, you can hit me up at info at TamishaWilliams.com. Also, hello at TamishaWilliams.com. You can message me on Twitter, tweet me. You could also message me on my Instagram account. I'm also on LinkedIn and Facebook, but truth be told, I post there a lot. I don't really check a lot of the messages, but I'll do better. Okay, thank you. Now I have to skillfully stop the recording. <laughs>